Hello, welcome to today's topic, which is the three retirement risks. So these are the three main risks that face clients when it comes to retirement, and they each have their own ramifications and their solution. Let's go through them quickly. So number one is longevity, longevity of the client. Number two is inflation, and three is volatility. So longevity, when you explain to the client, simply means, look, you have a, a pot potentially a, a, a chance of 20 to 25 30 or even longer time frame in retirement right there's a statistic it's, it's in our client presentation from nick murray basically it says a married couple that makes it to age 65 there is a chance that at least one there's a thing's a 70 plus percent chance that at least one of them will make it to age 90. so you're talking about 25 or 30 years kind of as an average right and the way i i, I bring that point home i said look if, if you had to if you had to stop working tomorrow how many years could you live off of your cash that you have with your current income or current expenses? Could you live 30 years? You gotta think about that. Right? You've got to have enough cash saved up, and this is the way I show it, enough cash saved saved up that you can for 30 years bring that down, right? So longevity, I want you to live long, but from a financial advisor's perspective, it's a risk. Right? You you living a long time is a risk to the money, right? You want to make sure that that you live longer than your money does. Number two is inflation. Very simple way I explain it is, look, every year it gets more expensive to live on this planet. And it's the silent kill. It's like boiling the frog, right? Just you turn it up slightly. You don't notice it as it's happening, but then when you look back on it, wow, what a difference. It's like you look back on how much a comic book cost or an ice cream sandwich when we were kids or, or even a car, right? If you remember maybe you're a teenager, how much a car costs and you look at it now. And even though we see that, it's hard to believe it's going to continue that way, but it will. Now, if you tell someone that a, a, a normal mid-sized car is going to cost eighty grand, when now it costs twenty-two thousand, they're not going to believe you. But that is what it is. Okay. So um, then you have uh, you have volatility. We're going to get to that in a second. So when we took, when we take a look at the first two, longevity and inflation. So as Nick Murray says, what that means is is the first problem is you want to make sure that you live longer. Sorry, uh, I, I think I said it wrong earlier. You want to make sure that your money lasts longer than you do. But at the same time, you want to make sure that the income from that money rises with the cost of everything getting more expensive every year. So it's they're, they're very closely related. They're not exactly the same risks. They're closely related. Um, and, and, and the inflation one is the one that people kind of, they believe you, but they don't buy it. Like, yeah, you know. Whatever, like, like if, if they here's here's where I see this coming into in play. If a client has retirement savings, a pension, perhaps, where when we do the math at 65, they have enough from all their sources to survive the way they want to. They then think they're set. You can tell them about inflation. They just, yeah, well, you know, I'll probably spend less though. You know, yeah, sure, I know it's 70, 75, 10 years later, things will cost more than a 65, but we'll probably slow down and play less golf and eat out less. And, you know, okay, that they don't buy that one so much. But anyway, that the presentation it isn't going through that. But so, so the issue is, how do we solve for, you're going to be living off this money for a long time, possibly three decades, and the income from it has to keep rising because of inflation. Well, the only thing I know of that has consistently over a long time period demonstrably done that is equities, right? Investing in a collection of the world's best companies, which we do through a mutual fund. And that's what I tell clients. Like when they say, why do you believe in, in mutual funds? Or really usually the question more is, why do you believe in equity mutual funds? And why do you believe in equity mutual funds, especially during retirement and the withdrawal phase, which very few advisors do, right? We, we, we of the Nick Murray philosophy believe differently than most advisors do. And that's a good thing because you want to be different. To be frank, you want to be different just for the sake of being different. But if you're different and you're right, which we are, that's a powerful one-two punch. Anyway, so when they ask me, they, they'll bring it up. Say, you sure? Because you know, everyone else I read, every other blog I read, every other person I talk to says we should be moving you know, as we near retirement, especially during retirement, we should be bringing part of our money into bonds or, or some other kind of fixed investments. Or it's like you can, and we'll get to that in just a moment when we talk about uh, volatility. But the truth is, now you're exacerbating 
the the other two risks. You're making you're you're exposing yourself to those two risks even more. Right? If you're shifting from equities into bonds, now the chance of that money lasting for 25, 30 years or so on, the longevity risk is even greater. And because you can't grow that money, same thing is the risk to inflation affecting you is even greater. So the only thing I know of, if you know a better solution, all the power to you. But the only thing I know of, Mr. Client, that is consistently over long term, demonstrably shown to outpace inflation and tackle longevity, let the money last a long time, has been investing in the world's great companies. And I believe in doing that via a collection of the world's great companies. And that is done through mutual funds. Okay, so there you go. And that's, by the way, how those two risks can help you is sell and promote and demonstrate why equity mutual funds are so great. Okay, That's why I always want it. You want to have principles. You want to have bullet points, mental bullet points of things you can tell people, little nuggets. Okay, let's get to the third one, volatility. So volatility is interesting. This is very important because it's only a risk in the withdrawal phase. Volatility is only a risk in the withdrawal phase. It is not a risk at all, completely utter non-risk during the accumulation phase. Okay? In fact, when clients have occasionally asked me about the market fluctuation, they may not say the word volatility, but they're talking about volatility. I address it. I say, listen, that we, in our industry, we call that volatility in our business. And that's only a risk when you're withdrawing money. Are you withdrawing money? No. But then don't even talk about it. It doesn't matter what, what the market went down by, by 30%. Yeah, I know you don't like it, but it's on paper. If you're not pulling money out, you're not in the withdrawal phase, it's utterly irrelevant. It doesn't make a difference. It's on paper. What does it matter? If you buy your house for a million bucks and your appraiser buddy two years later told you the house is worth 800000 on paper, what do you care, really? You're not selling it. You're living in it. What does it matter to you? It's just on paper. It's just it's just whims of the, of the local market. What does it matter, right? So I do that because by sidestepping, I don't got to go through a whole 20-minute drill-down talk about volatility. Not that I wouldn't do it, and I would if they want me to, but I'd rather just sidestep and say it's not even relevant. Like I don't even need to answer the objection because, because it's not even relevant. Okay, that's, at least that's my opinion on how to do that. So back to back to uh, volatility. So volatility is only a risk during retirement. And specifically what that risk is, it's the risk of the sequence of returns. You may or may not decide to tell all that to the client. You might. And that just simply means that it is true that if right when you're taking withdrawals, if the market is going down, that can be problematic. That can exacerbate. That can actually seep into risk number one, which is longevity. It can start cutting into the principal more than anticipated because you're both pulling out and it's a low uh, low market. In other words, you have for the same physical dollars, you got to sell more shares, right? You got to get drain out more of your account to get the same physical dollars because this even the market went down, but everything costs the same, and so that can affect you know risk number one, longevity. So it's only it's only a risk dur- during withdrawals phase, and of course it's only a risk if the market's actually in a, in a Longer term downward trend, not a short one day blip. Okay, obviously. Okay, that's when it's a risk. So the way to alleviate that risk, or to help alleviate, you're, you're always you're not you're never eliminating risks. You're always reducing them or alleviating them or lightening the load, so to speak. Is uh, two things. One is um, having an intelligent withdrawal strategy, such as still using equities but having a side fund, tapping the side fund while the market's going through a you know, a bear market of some sort, right? And and then t- going back to leaving it alone, leaving the equities alone t- side. The other one is using a variable annuity with a guaranteed income rider. I personally prefer in most cases a combination of the two, but either way, it's not the point, right? So those are, those are the two ways that you somewhat mitigate. That's what I'm looking for. Mitigate the withdrawal phase uh, risk, uh, the risk during withdrawal phase, which is volatility or sequence of returns. Uh, a couple more comments on this. First of all, if you notice in both of the, the both the intelligent withdrawal strategy with a side fund and the equi- uh, the variable annuity strategy, you're always still 100% in equities. That's still important. It's just kind of how you tap them and how you protect them is different. But you're still 100% equities, which leads me to this point. So people would say, oftentimes, I mean, I explain all this to them, and they go, "Well, then, then like you're saying, you're even saying, Michael, that that in retirement there's a risk if you're in all in equities and market goes down." Why don't you put it in bonds? And we can do that. And you're right. If we put if we put a percentage of this 10, 20, 30 percent of this in bonds, even 40 percent or some other kind of more fixed investment, you're right. It would help mitigate the sequence of returns and volatility risk. Here's the problem. Now, 
you're make, but now you're exacerbating or amplifying the longevity and inflation risk. That's the problem. That's what people don't get when they put money in bonds during retirement. Yeah, you might be mitigating the risk that you see right in front of you, right? Which is the volatility, because volatility is more in your face than the longevity and the inflation risk. Great. But that, like I just said, it's like the cure is worse is worse than than than, than the problem, right? The old saying in the medical industry, right? The cure is worse than worse than the, the pain or the or the issue, the problem, right? The solution's worse than the original problem. That's the problem with bonds. And what's what it, what makes this whole thing a little bit worse? Like I said, I want to repeat this. I tell this to the client is that look, the problem is that the two risks that bonds make worse are two risks you don't see in your face. They take a long time before you really, really see them. You might get it up here intellectually, but you won't see it. And, and but the the inflation, uh, the volatility, when you kind of see that, because you look at your account balance, wow, last two weeks it went down by eight percent, and I'm getting ready to take a make a withdrawal. So and and you just got to have the fortitude to get past that, right? So the solution, the point is, the solution to the volatility risk isn't moving the investment. The investment is always a hundred percent equities, specifically the world's great, commonly known, publicly traded companies. That's the answer. It's always the answer, always will be the answer. The difference is how you would draw the sequence of kind of how you would draw using a side fund and or variable annuity. But we need to stay in equity. So we solve that problem with the withdrawal. Maybe the shortest way I can say it is we solve the volatility slash sequence of returns risk by the method that we withdraw the money, the mechanism by which we withdraw the money. But we need to stay in equities to mitigate risk one and two, which is longevity and inflation. There you go. Those are the three risks, and that's how I use them. And I use those as talking points to talk around. That's why, you, as you like those of you that you know plug in, you know about we have the epiphanies, right? The 52 epiphanies. And we have the 22, I think it is, uh, investment principles of which this is one. Those I made up on purpose so that I have something to talk about, right? If, I, if I'm managing someone, I'm going to say, "Hey, listen, one of the what, epiphany number eleven I learned in my life is such and such." But especially with a client, it was like, "Listen, any financial advisor can tell you that principle number one is you got to stay in equities, right?" I, I say it like it's commonly known, right? It is known, right? That's and but but it helps me. It helps me. It helps that get. It's not like I'm just making it up on the spot. It's something I have to point to. So, all right, there you have it. Hopefully, it helped out.